Yes, as I said, uh, I was not joking, this is not a paper, uh, this is a presentation. And I apologize for not being able uh, to come up with a paper also on behalf of my co-author, who is Maria Grasso from the University of Sheffield, with whom I'm working on different papers right now, uh, relating basically on social movement outcomes, but also on participation in social movements at the individual level and collective level, like the social movements. Um, so my presentation will be very brief. Uh, as an introduction, I could say that the starting point for this future paper, I would say, is a sort of disappointment with the state of the literature on uh, social movement outcomes, although the literature is very substantial now. We have a lot of good scholars, some of them are here, of course. Uh, but uh, I thought, and we thought, that there is some uh, blind spots in this literature. And one of these blind spots have to do with the respondents in the sense of those who are supposed to respond or to respond to social movement challenges uh, and to protest activities. Uh, in the sense that, oh, this outline of uh, the future paper. Uh, <laughs> in the sense that, uh, as I said, we have a lot of work on policy-related impacts of social movements on success of social movements, if you want to take this, use this word, on responsiveness. Uh, this is a growing literature, well, this has been a growing literature for the last 20, 20 years, I would say. Uh, however, the state, uh, we think, has been a little bit under-theorized, uh, uh, not in social movement studies, of course, in <laughs> studies on social movement outcomes, mainly. Um, and I should qualify actually this statement. It has been under theorized in the sense that it has been taken as, again, to go back to my comments this, uh, this morning, as a sort of uh, uh, monolithical actor responding to challenges by social movements without uh, really looking uh, at who is really responding and what are the characteristics of those who are supposed at least to respond. So we think that there is uh, a tendency in the literature to simply assume actually that policymakers or members of parliaments, if we look at legislative as we do in this paper, uh, that the, the attitudes are important for responsiveness, but that the, this is, has not been studies, uh, studied uh, uh, enough. So the paper is all about, or the paper, the future paper is all about trying to push the research in this direction, actually. Uh, so what we do in this paper, and these are our research questions, what we will do in this paper, uh, will be to look at how members of the parliament view social movements and what is the impact of these views on how they deal with the movements themselves. Uh, secondly, but related to this, uh, the second research question is what is the link between the perceptions uh, of social movement effectiveness and different degrees or different kinds or different forms of responsiveness. And finally, a third research question, they are all related, of course. What is the link between democratic values and different degrees of responsiveness? Uh, so this is what we would like to do, at least in this paper. So we don't have hypotheses so far, but we have research questions, which is already something good, I think. It's a good starting point, at least. Uh, so we have actually uh, started to explore some uh, connections between uh, between uh, how members of parliament 
view social movements and how to deal with them. This is the title of the, of the, of the paper, actually. And we do so by using a data set which is not yet public, I think, uh, but which was uh, uh, given to us, maybe Rud knows, but given to us uh, very kindly by Stefan. Uh, I think the data will be released public. Do you know about this, this data? Know, it's not yet public. Yes, I think it will be. I know that I requested it and I've not had any response. So. <laughs> Who you are. <laughs> I have a response and I have the data. I will have the data. But now, what we do with this data then is another matter. So, this is the party rep uh, um, project. This is a project funded by the Belgian um, um, Foundation or the National Research Foundation, I think. I don't even know actually, I got the data that started to work on it. <laughs> so it's a project on uh, participation and representation uh, of uh, members of parliament in different countries. Uh, I don't exactly uh, remember which one I have to, I have to say. Uh, at the national level. And in this data set, uh, there are very nice questions uh, precisely about how uh, members of parliament, so policy makers, uh, view social movements and uh, other groups, including interest groups, different kinds of interest groups, and how they deal with them. So this is a nice way, uh, a nice way we think to uh, look at this, uh, to, to fill this uh, um, empty spot I was talking about. Uh, um, a few minutes ago. So this is actually basically a national, uh, um, um, a randomly, uh, a random survey done in different countries on uh, members of parliament. I think the, the, the data set has uh, something about uh, 1,000 uh, respondents or something, a little bit more maybe. <coughs> so and there are these questions that we are trying to use in this, in this paper. Uh, and the dependent variable in, in this first attempt is what we call here social movement influence. Uh, don't look too much at the concept, look at the indicator behind the concept, well, uh, related to the concept which we are using because we are ourselves not sure about which concept we should, we should use. Uh, this is our dependent variable, so it's a measure of the proportion of the initiatives taken by uh, members of parliament which they derive from interest group. This is one first nuance that I should uh, uh, stress because initially we were interested and we still are interested more in social movement actors, social movement organizations, but we couldn't find indicators, uh, at least not uh, for all our uh, the, for all the questions that we wanted to focus on uh, in the data set. Uh, so here we focus on interest group. So here I should say we should follow, although usually I don't agree, uh, Paul Burstein's suggestion who says that social movement organization <laughs> and interest groups are basically the same thing. So why not looking only at interest groups? So although I don't agree, here we are. I'm forced to agree in some way, or we are forced to agree to some extent at least. So this is the question actually that it's you. So uh, of the initiatives, bills, written or questions which you personally raised in Parliament in the last year, roughly what proportion of these did you respectively derive? And then there is a number of categories and one is interest groups. Uh, there is a, another one I think is citizens in general, but this is too vague, so we didn't want to use this one. Uh, could you please give a rough estimate in percent? So this, this is the dependent variable. This is what we want to explain here. Although then we can also switch dependent, independent in, in, future, uh, in future analysis, I think. And our dependent, independent variables, we have a, a certain number of independent variables. Uh, uh, maybe it's a little bit too optimistic uh, at this stage to call them dependent or independent because we are basically looking for correlations and, and, and covariations at this stage, I would say. But anyway, uh, we have some theoretical ideas in mind probably implicitly that uh, pushes up us to, to use these uh, words. Uh, 
One of the first indicator is what we call here uh, heart or factor responsiveness. It's a behavioral measure actually of relationship between members of parliaments and uh, different kinds of organizations. So this is the question that we are using. In your role as a member of parliament, how often in the last year have you had contact with the following groups, persons, organizations? One almost never to five almost every week, so it's a scale. And, and we created an index based on nine types of organizations, ranging from youth organization, elderly workers, employers, women, farmers, and other religious environment organizations. So, and the Cronbach's Alpha reliability is pretty, pretty, pretty good, I would say. Well, this is one, this is the first, I mean, this is the most important for us actually because it's related to responsiveness. But there is a second one which is very important for us in this context, is what we call here weak or soft responsiveness. So this is an attitudinal measure, it's probably the most interesting, at least for us, I would like to hear your evaluation and your judgment about this as well, this is to what extent do you agree or disagree that the following are desirable? And among the following, there was an item which reads like to involve interest groups in society more often in decision making. So the degree of desirability of having civil society, in this case, interest group involved in decision making. This is uh, uh, probably so far the one that, 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 that we like the most. Another one which is quite interesting is perceived effect in the social movements. Uh, and here I acknowledge that we are a little bit shifting conceptually because we are going from interest groups to social movements. So probably should be a little bit more consistent, but in this exploratory stage, I think we can, we can uh, look at this as well. So there are many opinions of us that can most be effectively, can most effectively influence decision in society, can indicate for each of the following actions, how effective you think they are, scale one to seven from uh, no effective, effective to uh, um, uh, very effective. And this is interesting. Per se. It's an inter interesting indicator per se, I would say, actually. Uh, then we also add uh, other variables with I think are more control variables. Uh, an index of democratic values. I'm not going into the details, so what they think about uh, how democracy should work, actually. Uh, Politicians should learn to translate the political view of citizens into policy as accurately as possible. In election, politicians should account for the voters for the action in the past. The most important policy question should be put at the votes in the referendum, blah, 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 blah. blah. Okay. The indicator of democratic values. Uh, and then here we also include uh, an indicator of uh, left right values, so left right placement. Uh, so this is uh, the questions that we are using so far and I think although I haven't been looking at the data closely because Maria has been doing it actually uh, but I think we cannot go much further than that with this data set but we'll see. Now I'm showing you a little bit of uh, simple uh, distribution. This is the distribution of uh, the dependent variable. How, uh, what is the percentage of your initiatives derived from interest groups? Uh, I'm not going to comment it actually very much because, but there is nice variation I would say in the in the variables, and we can see that actually uh, quite a few uh, say that actually a good percentage of their initiatives are derived from interest groups. Uh, this is the other, uh, the distribution of the other uh, variables, so the independent variables. How often last year contacted with, did you contact the following organizations? So it's not so interesting. This is the desirability indicator. So to what extent is the following desirable? Involve interest groups in society more often decision making. And you can see the respondents are more or less split not desirable, <coughs> desirable, with most say they are fairly, fairly uh, desirable. And this perhaps, maybe this is the most interesting from a social movement outcomes perspective. Uh, how effective demonstration influence decisions in society? Uh, as you can see, actually, most of them think that uh, social movements are effective. Uh, so, in my own work, actually, I 
tried to show that social movements are not very effective, <laughs> but apparently they think that this is not the case. Uh, so this is, I think this is quite interesting in itself. And this is democratic values in this, so okay, not so interesting. And then we have some kind of uh, bivariate uh, uh, relationships with scatter, uh, how do you call it, scatter graph, scatter uh, plot, scatter plot, uh, with the linear prediction, so. If there is no slope, there is no relation. So here is initiative from interest groups with contact time. Apparently no relationship. And I cannot say we were wrong because we didn't have any expectations. So <laughs> I'm in a better position than you from this point of view. <laughs> but from other points of view, I'm very badly <laughs> located. Uh, this is actually, we tried also to look at some conditional effects, so the po potential presence of conditional effects or mediating effects or moderating. I never know. Oh, okay. So maybe this is one of the most interesting actually. Uh, initiatives and contact time by desirability. Uh, we can see actually that uh, contact, uh, just I think this is the. Let me see if there is yeah, this, the one where maybe you can find something more or less interesting because actually the slope of the of the of the relationship the, of the linear uh, prediction changes in across desirable and not desirable well not desirable and desirable so maybe there there is some indication of some conditional effects that we might want to work on uh, this is with democratic values so no relation. Uh, this is again uh, democratic values by desirability, mm, nothing really going on. And this is with perceived uh, effectiveness of demonstration or social movements more generally. Uh, again, here we can find something going on maybe here when it's very desirable. So under, un, only under the condition that they think that it's very desirable there is some effect of this variable, which is uh, demo effectiveness. Uh, and this is left line placement. And this is a first attempt to do a multivariate analysis where we put all our indicators and we find actually that this desirability variable, maybe unsurprisingly, I don't know, I'm not going to say that this is trivial, but maybe it's unsurprising that uh, this variable actually has an effect. Also, the left-right placement has an effect, but this is a control for us. So, to conclude, because I finished my time already, I thought I was quick, but it's not. Uh, what we find is actually that uh, harder factor, what we call harder factor responsiveness on the part of uh, members of parliament, has uh, little impact on social movement uh, effectiveness or influence by social movements as measured by the percentage of initiatives that are taken or derived from uh, interest group. We don't have to forget we're talking about interest group. Uh, what we call weak or soft responsiveness has actually an effect, important effect, well, has an effect. Perceived effectiveness uh, doesn't have an effect. Democratic values doesn't have an effect. Um, and finally, uh, as we've seen, uh, uh, left-right placement. Uh, just a last word on uh, what we plan to do next is what I actually was planning to do <laughs> at the beginning, but then we went in different directions. I think what is important uh, now would be to look at different uh, characteristics, including social demographic characteristics of members of parliament, so the respondents, and to see how different degrees of responsiveness are related to this personal characteristics. In that sense, actually, what we are called Hilar or factor responsiveness, weak or soft responsiveness, could become actually dependent variables. This was uh, the initial plan, I have to say. But then we changed and we wanted to look at the relation between responsiveness and social movement influence. So this is more or less, well, this is actually uh, about it, what the stage of the, of the reflection so far.